Hi everyone, I'm Carlton Duck, pastor of Gethsemane Baptist Church, right here in Lynchburg, Virginia, and welcome along in this study in God's Word. Today we're going to be dealing with the promise of God's presence that I pray will challenge your heart. First, let me just say we appreciate you tuning in, not only to this program, but to all the programs at Gethsemane Baptist Church, our flagship program, the one-hour program, and other programs that we are in the process of producing and giving you teaching and preaching and just a well-rounded uh, well balance of, of spiritual food for your life to strengthen you, to bless you, and to help you. And especially during these times of difficulty and challenge and, and the, of course, the coronavirus and all the unanswered questions and the climate of our world being as it is. But I'm glad there is an anchor that we can cleave to today. I haven't come today to talk about governments or governors or anything of that caliber. I've come to talk to you about what really makes the change in your life, and that's the Lord Jesus Christ. And that's what we're about here at Gethsemane Baptist Church. It's amazing what God is doing, and we're very thankful to Him. We've spent 12 weeks in the back of a pickup truck. I've been called the duck in the truck, that's right. And, uh, but it has been an amazing time together with our folks and many others who have come and filled up the parking lot, side streets. And for 12 weeks, we've preached the Word of God from this location in a uh, driving church setting. And it's been phenomenal, the music, the message, and the cooperation and even the, even the point that we've been able to minister in our neighborhood here and what a great blessing that has been to us. We're very thankful today for you tuning in and I pray that your hearts will be blessed in this program. But I want to invite you to Gethsemane Baptist Church. Of course, on the 21st of June, that's Father's Day, we are opening our doors. We use that term, our doors have never been shut. From that standpoint, we the church never shuts its doors. Whether we're in the parking lot, in a building, on a street corner, uh, wherever we might be, uh, our doors, the doors of the gospel are open. So we're just going to open the building come the 21st of June. And we're having two worship blessings that you can be participating in, one at 930 and one at 1130. You don't have to call, make reservations or anything of that caliber. Uh, we just would love for you to show up and we will practice all the safety of distancing and and follow all the rules, etc. But you are welcome to come and be a part of what God is doing here. I've even had people say, is it any chance, any possibility that y'all can do some more services in the parking lot? Absolutely yes. Yes, indeed. And we shall. And we're going to look forward to that opportunity even when things get back to somewhat a normal capacity. I'm not really sure. I think we've got a new definition of normality here or normal anymore. But uh, anyway, yes, our plans are and, uh, and opportunities and the blessings that God will open up. We will absolutely take advantage of those and uh, bring you the gospel. In the meantime, the 21st, 930 9.30 a.m. and 11.30 a.m. There'll be no evening service, no Wednesday service yet. We're working back into those schedules, and perhaps by this fall, we can be back to somewhat full capacity. In the meantime, the church goes forward, and we still preach the word and still proclaim the message of Jesus Christ. Guess so many Baptist Church. It is still the church where the shout has not gone out. And we'd love for you to come and be with us here at 411 Blue Ridge Street, not hard to find, one block off of Lakeside Drive. That's Route 221. And we're near the main entrance to what used to be Lynchburg College by definition, but now it is the University of Lynchburg. So either, either title will get you here. Just come and join in the great things that God is doing. Bring your family, bring your children, bring your friends, just bring everybody that you can. And it's going to be an awesome time in God's house. We're looking forward to the great blessing and I hope you can be a part of it. Well, let's talk today about God's word and the promise of God's presence. And you know, it's not an unusual thing. Thing. It's not an unusual thing today that people struggle with the process of fear. We've seen for the last three months plus that people have been struggling with fear, fear about the coronavirus, not really sure what it's it's going to do and how it's going to affect our, our culture, our society and other issues that we've had to deal with. And what causes fear in your life? You know, and, and really, what is the number one fear that you're facing today? 
Is it your family? Is it the coronavirus? Is it the world condition? Is it your finances? Is it your health? I mean, there, there's an array of so many things that can grasp you today and pull you into a spirit of fear. But remember the acrostic of what fear represents. False evidence that appears real. F-E-A-R. False evidence that appears real. Now, from Isaiah chapter 41 and verse 10, we learn a great and awesome solution to our fear, and it's found in the presence of the Lord. Folks, listen today. The psalmist said in Psalm 16, he said this, Psalm 1611, he says, that will show me the path of life in thy presence is fullness of joy. Isn't that amazing? In his presence is fullness of joy. Now, what does the joy of the Lord do in your life? It counsels out that fear that's gripping you. You don't have to be controlled by fear. Oh, preacher, I just can't help it. I'm just so worried. There's so many things going on in the world. And, you know, we can just rehearse all those things. Or we can open God's word. And that will dissolve that fear. That will remove it when you start reading these things that are found in God's word. That is the antidote to fear. So here's a point for you. And I don't want you to forget it. The point is this, and I jotted it down. The Lord will never leave those who belong to him. So the first question you've got to come to realization with is, do you belong to the Lord? Do you know him as your personal savior? Well, I, I think I know the Lord. I know there is a God, and I know he created heaven and earth, and I know all those things and about God. And friends, that's not what gets you to heaven. It's knowing him personally. Yeah, but you know, I've got so many sins. You know, there's one sin that will send you to hell. It's not how much alcohol you have placed in your body or how many drugs you've done or all the other heinous sins that people do. The sin that keeps you out of heaven is rejecting Jesus Christ. But isn't it wonderful at the cross is a sufficiency of mercy to blot out all your transgressions, to remove all your iniquities. You've got to come to, to salvation You've got to say, I am a sinner in need of your salvation. Lord, I recognize you died on the cross for me. Come into my heart. Come into my life. Save my soul. And on the authority of God's word, for whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord, they shall be saved. So it's an amazing thing that God does within us today if we will come to him and ask him to save our souls. On the authority of God's word, he, which he, he shall. So... Isaiah 41 10 I want to read this to you what Isaiah records here and listen to these words now the first three words are important fear thou not in other words stop your fearing stop having a fearful heart he says for I am with thee who's the I the great I am that's who it is El Shaddai it's God Almighty God is with you so he says don't fear I'm with you I'm going to cover you. I'm going to get you through what you're facing. He says, be thou, not, be thou not dismayed, for I am thy God. I, he said, I'm your God. I'm with you at all times. Then he said, I will strengthen thee. Yea, I will help thee. Yea, I will uphold thee with the right hand of my righteousness. Thank God we have that promise today. Now, these verses give us two Two commands that we, we've got to learn to obey. Number one, fear thou not. Fear thou not. Stop fearing what's going on in the world. I'm just worried, preacher, what am I going to do? You're going to trust God. God has not forsaken his people. And the second thing is, he said, be thou not dismayed. My friend, listen, there are also two reasons now. Not only are we given two commands to obey, but there are two reasons to obey. And one is, he says, for I am with thee. In other words, God's saying, I'm with you for the long haul. I'm not going to turn my back on you. I'm not going to quit on you. I am there with you. I'm a friend that will stick closer than a brother. And the second thing he says, and see, this is what salvation does for you. He says, I am thy God. So, folks, listen. He says, I'm with you and I'm your God. Now, there's no one or nothing today that can raise itself above and greater than God is. Remember that uh, Satan tried to do that. He and his 
demon imps that tried to follow him were cast out of heaven. There is none greater than he is, for he is king of kings, lord of lords. He's the altogether lovely one. He's the God over all because he's the God who created and God that made and God has all power that in, is given to us by um, omnipotence. He's omnipotent. He is all powerful. Nothing today can bring itself to a greater level than who God is. And then there are three promises that God will keep. God keeps his word. Every promise he gives, he keeps. So there are three promises. One, he says, I will strengthen thee. See, in your flesh, you're weak, you're frail. But in Christ, you're strong in the Lord in the power of his might. Secondly, today, he says, I will help thee. Remember what David said in Psalm 121? I looked unto the hills from which cometh my help, my help cometh from the Lord, which made heaven and earth. He's your helper. And when Jesus left the earth, you read John 14. He said, I'll send you another helper. The word was comforter. That word comforter is interpreted meaning helper. Who's the helper? It's the spirit of God. You've got God's spirit living within you everywhere you go. When you sleep at night, there's never a moment on, in your life after salvation that God's not with you. And third thing, he says, I will uphold thee with the right hand of my righteousness. Now, God tells us what to do. Don't fear and do not dismay. And then he tells us why, because he is with us and because he is our God. It doesn't get any better than that. That's a promise from the Lord. So with God, there's strength, there's help, and the fact today that he upholds you to, to lift you up, to help you, and he never drops you. He never drops you. He never leaves you. He's there all the time with you. So from Isaiah, we find God is promising to bring his people back from captivity. Did God do that? He sure did. God has done everything he said he will do. And so the, 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 the crazy thing is Isaiah is writing about what is happening 180 years into the future. And God performed it. That's another great promise that we're waiting for. And that's the coming of the Lord. When is it going to happen, preacher? Friend, I don't know. I just know the times are right for it. But you know what? I'm not looking at the times. I'm looking to the Savior. I'm not trusting today governments and governors and all the other things that are, that are in our society today. I'm trusting the one that can make the difference. And that's God Almighty. You can trust the Lord. So even before God's people sin, they will, and were judged, and they would be, you know, sin brings with it a price tag. You can't avoid that. And then they were sent into Babylon for 70 years of exile. Well, the reason they were sent there was because of their sin, of their disobedience. Oh, the word says it's far better to obey than it is to sacrifice. See, you can serve God, you can obey God, you can keep God's word. But you'll never know how to keep God's word if you don't get in the word and read it and receive it into your spirit. So God tells them they will return and he will bless them once again. So he is such a gracious God, a merciful God, a good God. I mean, really, today, I, I just wish I was in your presence because I believe you would have to say, Amen, Pastor. God is good, even when times are bad, even when we're going through the valleys, even when we're going through the dark times, even when we're facing the struggles. God is still good. If you'll start looking at the good things he's done for you and stop looking at all the trouble, my daughter told me recently, she said, Dad, you need to stop listening to talk radio and the news so much. It's so depressing. She said, you know, spend more time with God. And I had to take her advice. Man, what a refreshing to my spirit. Well, it's hard to break yourself away because of all the events that are happening in the world and in our state and within our country. But friend, listen, the best thing that you and I can do is to pray and call upon a God who will hear our prayer. If my people which are called by my name shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, God said, I will hear from heaven. I will forgive their sins and I will heal their land. 
That is the prescription for America today. And churches are not heeding it. Preachers are not heeding it. And no one's heeding it. And it's time we, the people of God, start heeding God's word and get back to prayer. That's the, that's the solution, my friend. The word fear, you realize that the word fear today comes from a word uh, that really had initiated meaning and meaning to to fight or fleeing. And, and therefore, you know, fear will cause you to want to fight and to flee. But God's promises, he gives us promises today in order today so, you know, our families, our jobs, our marriages, our health and, and our finances and our worries and the world situation today, those words that come and bring fear into our life, God brings us a word of encouragement today. Instead of fleeing today our fears, Isaiah says, here is a five-point formula that will work in your life if you will invest yourself in what I'm trying to do. Number one, I will live without fear because God is with me. What was that again? I will live without fear because God is with me. So the scripture does not say God was, was with me or he will be with me. It says he is with me. Is means now. Tomorrow this time, he'll be here. And until he will be here. He's, he is with us. He's present tense. He's right now. And it's been said the phrase, you know, fear not, be thou not afraid today, is found 365 times in the pages of God's word. That could be one for each day of the year. 365 days, you've got a fear not or just be not afraid for every day that you face. You better remember that. Write that down. Put it someplace. Put it on the mirror in your, in your bathroom. Put it on your refrigerator. Write it on a piece of paper. Do something where you have to see it every day. Fear not. Be not afraid. Fear not. Be not afraid. Fear not. Be not afraid. Keep rehearsing that. Keep remembering what God has promised you today. And the first thing to do in order today to face your fears, you've got to remember today that God's with you. God has never left you and he never shall. That's a promise that he has given us today. Moses, he, he needed that reminder in Exodus 33 and 14. He says, my presence shall go with thee and I will give thee rest. Psalm 23 and verse 4. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I fear no evil for thou art with me. Thy rod, thy staff, they comfort me. Jesus promised in Matthew 28 and verse 20. And lo, I'm with you always, even to the end of the world. Amen. So when you're filled with fear, remember this truth today and declare it. I have no fear because he is here. And I'm not trying to be poetic. I'm just bringing a point out to you today. God's with you today. The problem with most of us is we are unaware of his presence because we're consuming our time and all of our life with the stuff that's happening around us. And all this too shall pass. And then, my friend, what really counts is what you've done with God in your life. If you're, if you're filled with fear, it may be because you're acting like Jesus is not here with you. And that's contrary to God's word. Second thing, I will not be dismayed because he is my God. To be dismayed means today to be broken or to be filled with fear. So it means also to be anxious. And I tell you, there's a lot of anxiousness going on in our world right now. It's living in a state of alarm. Everybody is scared to death. And so the, the key is not to be dismayed, but it's to make sure and to know your God is here with you. And he watches over you and he protects you and he shields you today. Is he your God? That's the question you've got to answer today. And the promise becomes activated when you today personalize your relationship with him and trust him as your personal savior. So if we would see God as big and as grand as he is, and there's nothing greater than he is, really, most of your fears would disappear instantly. When we fear God, we won't fear any other thing. See, we've got the reverse here. We're not fearing. We're not respecting, revering God. We're rather being filled with the world. Our thoughts, our words, our actions, we sleep out. We go to bed with it every night. Listen today, you need today to put Christ first in your life. Third point, I will lean on God to strengthen me. I will lean on God to strengthen me. So Corey Ten Boom often said, in times of fear, I don't wrestle, I nestle. <laughs> 
Psalm 29 and verse 11 records, The Lord will give strength unto his people. The Lord will bless his people with peace. How can he do that? Because he's a prince of peace. And he will give you an adequate amount of peace every day in your life that you need. There's also a great comfort found in Isaiah 42 and verse 3. I'll read it to you. A bruised reed, a bruised reed shall he not break. And, and the smoking flack shall he not quench. So this passage is then quoted in Matthew 12 and verse 20 when it's referring to Jesus. So Jesus does not break us, nor does he smash us. He doesn't leave us smoldering today. He puts life within us and we can trust him in all things at all times because he is our God. He is our help. He is our refuge. He is our strength. He is always there. We cannot today get any better than God is to us. And when you start putting all this together today, you're blessed a lot better than you ever thought you were. Now, turn the news off and start turning the Bible on in your life. Start absorbing into your spirit what God has said. The fourth point is, I will trust God to help me because God is always present. A present help in time of trouble. He is my refuge and strength, Psalm 46. God's promised strength to those today and he's promised to help us. He doesn't just throw you back into the world and say, hey, good luck. No, God's with you all the way. Uh, Hebrews 13 reminds us, 13.6 as a matter of fact, The Lord is my helper, and I will not fear what man shall do unto me. God will never unfriend you today. Instead, he promises to help you. He is your helper. He's always there. He's not leaving you, nor forsaking you. Oh, what a friend, that great old hymn. What a friend we have in Jesus. And I'm glad we can cast our every care upon him, knowing that he cares for us and that he is constantly there watching over us. And then the fifth point is this. I believe that God will uphold me with his right, with his righteous right hand. So the word uphold means to hold up, to grasp, to support. See, God is holding you up. You're safe in his hands today. And the idea is similar to the, the word undergird, which means to make secure underneath. If you look to your left, your right, above, beneath, behind, in every direction, he's always there with you. See, he lives within you. He came within your heart and your life at salvation, and he never moves out. And so we are upheld by his righteous right hand. And so this is the hand, a promise that God has given us today that we can put our trust and our confidence and our faith in him and knowing that he'll never fail us today. Maybe you feel like you've failed. Maybe you feel like, man, I'm just, I just feel like giving up. Don't hold on to that. Hold on to the truth today that he upholds you. You can't hold yourself up. We can't do anything. But in Christ, we can do all things. See, that's an attitude. Philippians 4.13 is an attitude. I can do all things through Christ, which strengthens me. That's not arrogance. That's an attitude of trust, of reliance that you have in God. And listen to Psalm 145, 13 and 14. Thy kingdom is an everlasting kingdom, and thy dominion endureth throughout all generations. The Lord upholdeth all that fall, and raiseth up all those that be bowed down. Uh, bow down. The Lord will never leave those who belong to him. And he's not going to leave you. He's there with you and for you today. As we close in this time of teaching and the word today, I, I want to close with my attention to draw you to the word of God. I want to draw you to Jesus. Listen, stop running from him and start running to him. Stop trusting the world and start trusting Christ. Stop putting your confidence in governments and put your confidence in the King of Kings. And today, this is where we today need to be with God. I've never seen so many Christians falling apart. I've never seen so many Christians scared to death. What are you going to do when Jesus comes? Well, preacher, are things going to get worse? They could. We're not in the tribulation. The Bible tells us we'll escape the wrath which is to come. Paul said that in Thessalonians. 
But it doesn't mean that we won't have trouble along the path. And right now, we've got more trouble. And we can, as your fellow said, we can shake a stick at. But I tell you, you've got to remember today, John 1, 14, listen to this. And the word was made flesh, dwelt among us, and we beheld the glory, the glory of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. He's full of grace and he's full of truth and he's there to help you today and to meet every need of your life. Jesus was sent from the presence of the Father. He came to this earth, condescended, came down, lived 33 and a half years, died on a cross, went to a tomb, arose victorious over death, hell, and the grave. And today he has victory. And on the 40 days later, after the resurrection, he ascended back into heaven. And today he's now in the presence of the Father. And we are reminded of a promise that one day he's coming again. For the Lord himself, the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout and the voice of the archangel. The dead in Christ shall rise first. We who are alive and remain will be caught up in the cloud to meet the Lord in the air. And so shall we ever be with the Lord. Last verse, listen, listen to this. Wherefore, comfort one another with these words. That's comfort. Jesus is coming again. Are you ready today? And I close with these thoughts of God. I am your God. So therefore, God is over you today. I am with you. That means they, he's by your side. I will strengthen you. That means from the inside of you, he will strengthen you to the outside of you. I will help you. That means he's all around us at all times. And I will uphold you. And that means he's got us from underneath. So therefore, the bottom line comes down to this. Two words. Fear not. Stop it. Stop consuming your life with fear. And start consuming your life with faith. Have faith in God. As a matter of fact, Hebrews eleven six 6 says, without faith, it's impossible to please him. Put your confidence in God today. Trust him. And if you don't know him, receive him. And if we can be of a help to you, please let us know how we can. We'll be glad to pray with you and pray for you. If you need a Bible, if you need a church home, you need a place to come worship, where the word of God is preached and the people are friendly, where you can hear the, the word of God and the spirit of God is so strong. His presence is so powerful. Gethsemane Baptist Church, 411 Blue Ridge Street. It's not because of me. It's because of him. He's here and he's doing a work and he'll do a work in your life. Come and let him do that work. 411 Blue Ridge Street, right here in the heart of Lynchburg, Virginia. Not hard to find, friend. Come on, and we'd love to see you at GBC. Remember, starting the 21st, the 21st, that's this coming Sunday, Father's Day, and we're going to have a gift for every man present. We're going to be having worship at 930 and 1130. Now, because of the coronavirus and the... Uh, Things that are being placed upon us, the guidelines, we're not having Sunday night or Wednesday at this time, and we're not having children's ministry, but we've got a great program for our kids right in the pew that they can be involved in, and it'll be a great blessing. So I want to encourage you to bring your family here. And remember, at 9.30 a.m., 11.30 a.m., every Sunday and probably until the fall of the year, and hopefully we can get back to our normal schedule. Well, again, thank you for tuning in today. And may God's goodness just watch over you and bless you. Father, I pray right now that you'll bless each one watching this program and pour out your abundance of goodness in their benefit. We thank you again for tuning in today. May heaven bless you. You keep looking to Jesus. Come see us, and may God mightily meet your every need. Thanks again for tuning in. God bless you today.